Hey guys, this is a new type of heater I found online and it uses the same principle as the terracotta heater except this one is metal and it's really easy to put together. So I'm going to show you every step along the way of how to assemble it and what type of fuel I'm using. I'm not using what's recommended but I'll show you what you can order online if you don't want to make your own fuel source. Okay, so this assembly is really easy on this. I'm going to show you exactly how to put it together. It's all metal and it's got a protective layer on it so you won't burn the surface you're sitting it on but this just kind of has a little double in there that prevents it from getting too hot on the base. And it's acting as a natural way to protect your surfaces. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill holes with just some normal glass jars with metal lids. I'm gonna carefully put a hole right in top of the center of each one. All right, and that's where our fuel is going to be, and we're going to use a special type of wick on each one of these, a wick that will not burn up and it will last virtually forever. Now, we're not using a standard wick. We are actually using plumber's felt or carbon felt, and so we're just going to cut this to fit inside. We're going to make two separate wicks, and so I'm just going to cut this very quickly. I can get it cut there. It's a little hard to cut with scissors. I probably can use a razor blade to cut a little bit better. This can be ordered online. I can put the links to all of this in the description. And so we want the wick to be just slightly taller than the jar. So our wick will come out. We don't want it coming out too high. We just want it coming out just out the top. So we're just going to make it mm, about the same height as a jar, just slightly taller. So I'm going to cut that across there. Little, like I said, it's a little bit easier to cut with a razor blade, but I don't have one handy, so I'm just using this pair of scissors. And I'm hoping you can see that clearly. I'll move these out of the way. We're just going to cut that and make two separate wicks for our heater here. And we're going to roll them into a circle once we get them cut. I'm going to cut the first one right here and just fold it. Or roll it so it'll fit snugly inside of our container and what we're using is a very pure alcohol it's 99 percent pure so we're going to put that in there we're going to roll our wick up and sometimes it takes a little bit of heating to get the wick to have a wicking action so we may have to heat the wick with our torch and like i said earlier we're just going to have it coming out just a little bit not a lot maybe about a half an inch and then we're going to put our wick down into the container and we're going to fill our container with very pure alcohol. You can use different types of alcohol, but I think the 99% pure burns a little bit better. So we're going to test this and heat it up a little bit and make sure it burns properly. Now, sometimes it does take a little bit of alcohol on the top, but as you can see, it's burning pretty good from the beginning. A little bit of the carbon needs to burn off there, but it'll burn very purely and it'll start to have, have that wicking action. We're going to put that out and go on to the next step. All right, we've got our second wick cut and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull it through the top of our jar. Be careful because the way I've cut this, sometimes these jars will have sharp edges, so you can cut yourself fairly easily if you're not careful. Just going to pull that through the top just a little bit. Like I said, maybe a little bit under half an inch. I'm going to put some more very pure alcohol into the second container and we're going to carefully put that in there and so now we have our fuel sources ready they're really easy to refill and they will burn for quite a while you wouldn't think that a jar this small would burn but this literally will burn for many hours and the whole system will heat up very quickly okay we're going to set these to the side and we're going to assemble this and this is just a three-piece system the base the the heater portion and this right here goes inside the heater. So what we're going to do first is we're going to put in our threaded rod. And on the bottom of the threaded rod, we're going to put one of the nuts that come with it. Okay. Let's make sure that's like that. Put one on the top. I could have, I could have done both of them from the bottom. It would have been a little bit easier. But this goes down pretty quick. I can just spin it around until it reaches the right point. And this rod will stand on its own once we tighten it up. It'll take me a second to get it down there. 
and we're just going to tighten it from the base, flip it over, and then tighten in two directions until our rod is now very tight in there and it's not going to move. Just make sure we get it as tight as we can by hand. We can't come back with a tool, wrench, or whatever. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to put this piece on. We've got to put this in first. I guess I should do that. That's going to be the base that holds that in place. And we can adjust the height of that fairly easily. And that's going to sit on like that. We're still a little bit too, a little bit too low, so I'm going to raise it up until we get it at just the right point. We only want a small amount of the threaded rod coming through to the through the top. So we may have to manually adjust it until we get it at just the right height. Okay. Now we're going to put our second nut on there so we can hold that in place so it doesn't move. Okay. And then the last piece is going to go on like that. We're going to put our top on and we can adjust it as needed. Now this is super simple to put together and just want to make sure and one thing that we probably need to do is raise this up just a little bit. So we want to make sure we can fit our two containers in there with fuel. And so if you want to put this out, it can be blown out or you can put something over the top of it to smother the flame. So we're going to do that. And I still think we're not quite high enough, so we're going to raise this up just a little bit. And in addition to doing that, it may be easier to pull these out from the side. So we're going to try that. That's pretty close. And now we can get these out without too much effort. Just kind of lean it to one side and pull it out like that and refill. So there we go. We have our fuel in place. We're going to put our last nut on top. And it does, this kit does come with a tiny little wrench, so you can tighten it like this if you like. Okay. And now we're going to light the system and check and see how hot it gets. And I'm going to have, probably have to tighten it up because it's a little bit loose now on the bottom. Now, I also purchased these small candles online. These are one-time use because the tops can't be re reused. And so it's very hard to get these tops off without damaging it. So this is just a one-time use candle. I'll put a link to these as well, but I'll show you these like pretty easy. And they, they're gonna put out heat, but I don't think they're gonna put out near the heat that these will, my glass jars that have the carbon wicks in them. So the carbon wick, I think is gonna put out a lot more heat and this is gonna get a lot hotter. I'm gonna light these and show you exactly how to do that. Just take your torch, light one, Light the other. They're both burning. It's going to take a little while to get hot, and then we'll do a test to see exactly how hot it actually gets. Now, I wanted to take the top off and show you how well this is, is actually burning. It's putting out quite a bit of heat. This is going to get really hot. I'm going to test it and see what the temperature is. Our metal plate on top that holds it in place is about 250 degrees, and it's getting hotter by the second. And I'm going to Put the top back on, tighten it down, and we'll do a final test to see how hot it gets overall. Now, I wanted to film from beneath to let you see the flame and how well it's burning. The small candles that I ordered are not going to put out near the same amount, so this puts out quite a bit more heat. It's burning a little bit of the carbon off, and that eventually goes away as the candles get a little bit more burn time on them. But overall, this top is going to get really hot, and I'm going to show you exactly how hot it gets in just a few minutes. All right, so it's been burning for less than five minutes, and it looks like it's getting about 460 degrees, 470, 480, 490. So we're approaching over 500 now. So it's getting really hard to see it at the top. Yeah, I've seen it hit 550, almost 570. I don't know if we're going to top 700 degrees, but this small little 
flame based heater that has this metal top and this is all purchased as designed as a heater so this isn't homemade but the fuel system I put in there is homemade and it puts out quite a bit of heat and I can feel the heat very easily and it won't this will not heat for long long periods of time but it will heat a small area such as a greenhouse a hoop house and it will get really hot around the edges and it will heat maybe 10 to 20 square feet and keep it from freezing if you have tender plants in there so this is great for small greenhouses i wouldn't advise using this in a home unless you have all kind of detection equi equipment carbon monoxide detector smoke detector and a fire extinguisher all three to make sure but i can definitely feel the heat and it only uses a very small amount of the alcohol over a period of hours so these two will probably last six to seven hours easily now I will recommend that if you're using this in a finished area of your home that you set it on the stove where it can self ventilate out the exit of your stove or if you have a fireplace that's not being used you can set it in the fireplace and have a fan that's directing the heat out you can use a heat powered fan to put it close to or on top of it so the heat generated from that will push the air out into the room but just remember this is not for really for home heating this for me is i'm using it as a supplement to my greenhouse heating small i have a smaller greenhouse and also some hoop houses i'm going to be using this to prevent it from freezing my tender plants now i've disassembled the first heater and i've ordered a second one online that i thought was interesting this one you can actually cook on or you can put a thermoelectric fan on this is the thermoelectric fan i referred to is powered by heat when the base of this heats up, the fan will push the heat around the room. You can just set it here. That's where it's going to get hot. You could also cook up there if you wanted to. But I'm, I'm going to light this, show you how hot it gets, and actually demonstrate the fan actually working. So let's find our torch. I'm going to relight this. Lights right up. We're going to put our second one. I'll put a link to this one down below. But as you can see, you can cook on top of it. Put that on top. Put our thermoelectric fan there and give it a few minutes to heat up the top of that and you'll see movement of the fan pushing the heat around the room. So as you can see, once the base of it heats up, you'll get that thermoelectric reaction in your fan. No electricity required and it will just continually run and push the heat around the room or your hoop house or your small greenhouse and it will definitely make a difference and prevent your tender plants from being frozen. So it's just one of those things that you have to kind of experiment with, try different types of fuels. I think the more pure fuel, like the higher grade alcohol, that's going to put out less smoke and just want to make sure that you have all the safety equipment, such as a carbon monoxide detector, smoke detector, and a fire extinguisher. And like I said, you don't want to sleep with this in your house. You want to put this just as a supplemental thing. I'm using it in my greenhouse and that's the only place I would use it. I might put it in my fireplace where there would be natural ventilation for the fumes going out or on the stove where fumes would go out through the roof of the house from the ventilation system there. So guys, as you can see by my previous videos, I love experimenting with different forms of heat for my greenhouse and my hoop house. This isn't necessarily to bring an interior area of your home up to a very high temperature. I've got a video that's very similar in production. It uses terracotta. I'll link that one up above as well so you can see the terracotta heater. But I've got a lot of different heater types using a lot of different fuels. So if you'll just take a look at them, you might find one you really like. My favorite, several people have asked me what's my favorite. It's actually a passive heater that uses large containers filled with water and it uses sunlight to heat them. And that really helps the greenhouse as well. So all of these things combined that I use over time really makes a huge difference. And it prevents my greenhouse from getting below 33 or 34 degrees at nighttime when it's really cold outside. So guys, if you found anything helpful in the video or if you have a comment or you hadn't even have another idea for heating a greenhouse or a hoop house, please leave it down below in the description because I'm always wanting to experiment and try different things. So I hope you'll like and subscribe and have a great day.